you say, let me testify. Did you not know the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy? Yes. Yes. You know, because confession, it really, when you confess with faith, when you said something but with faith, you almost like prophesy. A lot of things uh, we've said, uh, and I didn't know it was by faith many years ago, I got mentioned to you about buying an automobile at 17 and I confessed this thing. I confessed it, I wasn't saved. But I confessed it before my friends and before others. I said, I'm going to buy me an automobile. I confessed that thing and I believed it. I didn't have to believe it. I believed it. And it took a long time to get one dollar an hour. <laughs> and you're paying, uh, you, you only get, I was only working two days. And I'm, I bring home $13.80. <laughs> and somebody say, you going to buy an automobile? Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but I kept on putting a little bit back. Kept on with it. And a little bit back. Yes. And after a while, that they came right on time. Mm -hmm. We moved to about eight miles away from where the school was. If I hadn't had an automobile, I would have had to change where I went to school. But because I had an automobile, I could drive. That was the senior year. So I could drive to school. The Lord let it happen at the right time. Oh, what a good God. And uh, my dad didn't buy any of us an automobile. He didn't buy my other brother's car either. He didn't buy me, and he didn't help. He didn't help me. Hey Amen. He said, "You don't have enough money to buy that." <laughs> Say, "You like it? Yes, I like it." Say, "You don't have enough." <laughs> so I had to take what I could get. Yes. But thank God, that faith. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know. Conf I, I, I was confessing it. You gotta confess that thing. What do you want God to do for you in your life? You got to confess it. Hallelujah. You got to say it. Do you not know the power of life and death is in your mouth? Hallelujah. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. What you said. Of the tongue. I remember trying to ride a bicycle and looked like I couldn't learn to ride a bicycle. I was pushed and pushed and pushed. And still I would, couldn't hold it. One day by myself, I had a bicycle my brother had uh, borrowed from. Uh, one of his friends that he had newspapers on the back, and I said, I'd lie. See, when you confess a thing, you don't say it below. You say it real lie. I said it real lie. I'm going to ride this bicycle today. I said, I'm going to ride this bicycle today. I got on whatever aggressive. Feel, you know, bumpy and lumpy. And I got on there and wobbled, you know. And I went to the other end. I, I had it there. And I was turning around and went back. I had it. But I confessed it before it come to pass. The Lord filled me with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I confessed it before I got it. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. God is ready to fill anybody all the time. Yes. Yes. 
And believe it or not, no one could ever be the same until you're Holy Ghost filled. Right. When you're Holy Ghost filled, you can be a witness for God like nobody else. Yes. He told the disciples, do not go to Samaria, don't go to the most parts, but wait until you be a doubt. Yes. Yes. So you have to have the Holy Ghost. Yes. But the preaching of the cross the them that perish is foolishness. Yeah. People don't believe it. They don't know. People just think a person is just preaching a Pharisee, uh, a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. But it's real. It's real. Yeah. Somebody said, well, how do you know it's real? Because I've experienced it. <laughs> yeah. I've said, I want you to know, I heard God speak more than one time in my ears. All right. He said, well, I heard him speak on this side. I heard him speak on this side, too. Yes, but I've heard him speak on the outside. Yes, Amen. I didn't hear him speak on the outside before I got filled on the inside. Yes, but after I got filled, I heard him. Yes, Lord. And then he'd give you a spirit of discernment. Yes. Amen. Yes. But thank God for the preaching of the cross. Yes. I got heard of it because I don't want to hold you on. Yes. Or the preaching of the cross uh -huh. is to them that perish uh, foolishness. It's foolish to those who don't have Jesus. Amen. When you don't have Jesus, you don't want to hear nobody preach no gospel. Amen. You don't want to even come to church. Amen. People who are not saved, they don't want to come to church. That's true. Because the church reminds them mm. that they're not saved. It reminds them that they got they like that where it ought to be yeah, with God, so they don't want to come to church. But unto us which are saved, but to us which are saved, you got to say it is the power of God. It's the power of God. Somebody said, "Well, how can it be?" Because the power of God delivered you. The power of God delivered me, and the power of God saved you. And the power of God saved me. Yes. For it is written. It's written. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Now that's in the Old Testament. God said, it's written. It's written. Through Paul, it's written. Yes. I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. And will bring to nothing. And will bring to nothing or not. The understanding, the understanding of the prudent. Of the prudent. Yes. God said nothing to that. Nothing. When a person don't know Jesus, knowledge don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. Don't mean a thing if you don't know Jesus. But when you know Jesus, you have everything that there is. And then the rest of it going to come to you. Amen. You have fear and benefits when you get saved. That's true. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. Thank God for your word. And all these things shall be added unto you. Now, people think that you're going to get those things by doing nothing. Absolutely no. <laughs> Absolutely no. Is somebody paying your rent? Are you are you paying your rent? God helping you to pay your rent. But you don't have to do something to help pay the rent. He'll help you. When the, when the wife wasn't working, because she worked so many years. And when I, my, my job uh, laid me off and gave me one year free pay, 90% of free pay for a whole year. Well, I didn't mind being laid off. <laughs> uh, I could have took that for about 10 years. <laughs> but it only lasted for one year. After the year was over, they said, you have to come back and we want to send you to Oklahoma. Well, I said, I know I'm not going over home. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to thinking, what are we going to do? The wife's not going out that way. But the Lord has set us up. All right. I didn't even know it. God has set us up. Yes, sir. And we had a little rental property, and that was a 
enough to sustain us. You tell me God not good. And sometimes people say, you don't get things, God will help you to get that. But you're going to have to do something. He's not going to do it by himself. God didn't do it for us by ourselves. I don't know how many times I didn't work on apartments. Somebody said, well, you're a preacher. You worked on Yes, I did. Yes. said, well, why did you do it? Because I didn't have the finance to hire somebody. All right. All right. And so if I did, if I didn't do it, then along, somewhere along the line, my finance is going to be in trouble. And so I did do it. Yes. But it pay off if you stay with God. Yeah. And, uh, sometimes people think uh, the wife and I work tremendously hard. Yeah. Sometimes people don't know that. But we work tremendously hard. Yeah. But I thank God for the strength yeah. that He's given us. And how merciful you've been. And I was saying to live in water so many, so many years ago, by your house. Some people, every now and then they did. You sure did. I told people years and years ago. When I first came here to Georgia, I told people to buy their house. I remember only one sister I remember. Bought a house, I think the house may not even cost about 150, 60,000. And she left the church, she should have been laying at the door. <laughs> she don't probably even remember that the pastor told her. Uh, but you that can't buy a house, buy one. Yeah. So, well, uh, I know, I know the interest is up. And interest is high. But eventually it's going to go down. But it's not going to go down right away. Generally it'll be down by three years. Uh, so we may as well have to brace ourselves. Because I tell you this much. Real estate going to steady go up. Now that, that idea of saying it's going to come down. I don't think so. Real estate is one of the best investments you can put your dollar in. Amen. So, thank God for the preacher of the cross. I'm almost through. Where is the wise? The Bible said to Paul, where is the wise? Where is the scribe? And the scribe, the disputer. Where is the disputer of this world? Uh huh. Had not God made foolish? The wisdom of this world. The wisdom of this world is foolish. Yeah. Read. Well, after that, in the wisdom of God, mm -hmm. the world by wisdom knew not God. See, why people don't have enough understanding oh, God. that God could just speak this world into existence. Oh. They can't believe that. Mm -hmm. They think it was some scientific something. Yeah. They said it was a great boom. And there was a great boom, God did it. It wasn't done by man. And thank God that he, the Bible says he everywhere. He's omnipresent. Everywhere. Amen. You can go to the desert, God will be there when you get there. And you can go to the moon, God will be there when you get there. He everywhere. I'm not crazy. He's so big. Yes, he is. This little one even whole this little old church building. <laughs> when I did whole is part of God, not his foot. <laughs> that was somebody. Amen. Amen. Right Solomon had enough understanding to know that. He said, How much more in this house that I built for you? The heavens. And the heaven of heavens can't hold you. That's what Solomon said to God. Amen. How much more this house? 
God, I feel for you can hold you. Thank God for sound that give us that revelation. I wouldn't have known how big God was to tell a man through his revelation on it. But he big. He big. He's so big. Think about it. I'm almost to think about it. He feed everybody. Look how many, look how many chicken dinners were served last night. And, and I'm, not, I'm not just talking about here in Georgia. I'm talking across the United States, across every continent, and crawl all over the world. God is feeding the people. He's a big God. Come on, let's get in the Lord. He's a big God. He's a big God. He's not no little God. Hallelujah. God said, am I not, am I, am I God? At hand. And now the God of all. He's a God right here. And he said, The word. Jesus said, The word. The word is not there. Yes. Even in your mouth. That is the word of faith. Whoa, I got to See, we got to stop believing God. signs and wonders ought to be given to everybody. Amen. 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 Thank God for the gospel. Amen. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. And the works is complete. Yes. Everything's been done. Yes. There's nothing yes. incomplete. Amen. He said, Father is finished. Yes. He wouldn't die until he finished the work. Hallelujah. 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 But the uh, wisdom of God is wiser than men. And the foolishness of God is stronger than men. Now that's heavy. You tell me what that means next time I see it. I know what it means. I'm going to ask you, you, you find out what that means. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Foolishness of God is wider than men. And the weakness of God is stronger than men. I said that to a son on the job one day in the chest. And I knew it, I did it. To confuse him. And from that day forward, he come around my job, and I go, "Why, Lord, save me!" But I purposely did it. But you know what? I asked God, "What did that mean?" Because it didn't sound right. And God told me it wasn't meant. Yes, Lord. So I'm gonna let you find out. <laughs> come on, let's say it right quick. We get ready to close. Let's say it right quick. Give God some praise. Give God some glory.